Hello Blender users, this is Blender 2.6 and today we are going to deal with a simulation uh, that deals with gravity and in specific circular gravity. Now, most of us know there is already a gravity over here which is normally set at 9.8 but we are going to cre uh, artificially create uh, a more realistic gravity uh, situation uh, such as the one that you're seeing right now. You can see these uh, and these masses orbiting a much heavier mass and if I actually zoom in you're going to see that this mass is actually moving because of the of these masses now the reason that happens is because of the third law of Newton third law of Newton states that for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction essentially there is just one force between two objects and that affects this object more because it's less massive as you can see over here 50 units this is more massive because it has 10,000 units. So how do we simulate this? Alright, so let's get started here. So right off the bat, uh, I'm going to delete the default cube. Delete this as well. Uh, for the most part, you won't need it. Uh, add in uh, an icosphere. It doesn't matter what object you use, uh, as long as it's circle. Blender game. Um, let's make sure this is a rigid body with collision bounds of a sphere. Perfect. You hit P, it falls. Let's make sure uh, there is no gravity because we are going to create artificial gravity. Um, now let's go to the logic editor. Let's add a pulse sensor. Pulse. Uh, sensor that runs a Python every single frame. And let's create the Python script. New Python, you can name it whatever you like. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So we begin by type. So we begin by typing uh, import. BGE. Let's just turn on the formatting so we can see things better. Uh, let's define our object as own, which is BGE dot logic dot get current controller dot owner. It does not make sense. Not a big deal. Uh, you'll get the hang of it. Let's define our distance as own dot position minus the position the position of the source of gravity which in this case is zero but we're not going to put that zero simply because it is an effect now we, we do know that uh, d uh, own dot position is a vector it's not a number um, so we'll keep that in mind let's now jump to this wikipedia page and let's look at this equation over here force equals g m1 mass 1 times mass 2 over r squared so g m1 and m2 are pretty much constant so let's ignore that for now let's make sure that let's just say they are 1 for now and r squared uh, is is something that we are going to change uh, so this is going to be d right because that's the difference between the two objects which is d dot position d its own dot position so make sure it's d squared so hopefully this should be our force wrong this won't be our force simply because d is a vector and it does not work so we have to make this a number a so we just make sure it's a magnitude so now it's just a number instead of a vector and Furthermore, uh, now, now f is a f is a number, not a vector anymore. So let's apply this force on dot apply force to uh, f comma zero. We want the world orientation, not the local orientation of the object. Uh, you hit p, nothing happens. Why not? Let's look at the console line 4 
float division by zero. Right. Uh, so let's move this away from zero because only the position being zero, one over zero is not possible. It's undefined. Now let's see. Now we are having a problem here. Line five. Uh, essentially what we what it's saying is that we cannot have a number over here we have to have a vector right how do we create the vector well we can make the f a vector just by multiplying the magnitude by the orientation what is the orientation equal to the orientation is equal to d which is a vector or d dot magnitude which is the length of the vector so the vector divided by the length of the vector gives you the orientation so now let's apply the force and we should see it moving away from the center now that's not how gravity works it does not repel it tracks so which means we have to make our force negative and that should be fine all right now that's working so why so how do we make it orbit well the way we can make it orbit is by using uh, something called the orbital the orbital velocity the orbital speed so we know that orbital speed is approximately gm over r gm for our purposes are is constant so let's define our v v equals 1 which is gm for now it's constant over d dot magnitude and square root of that now uh, you can import another modulus for for uh, math but I'm just going to square this to 0.5 which acts as the square root 1 over half um, and then we can set the linear velocity set linear um, on dot set linear velocity as um, as the vector being zero comma zero comma zero comma zero now we want this to be and uh, the velocity to be set towards the x direction the positive x direction so let's make sure this is v uh, and let's just let me just fix this all right that's better now let's see well it just keeps on going the reason it keeps on going is because uh, this is happening every single frame we have to make sure that this happens just the first frame and never again so in order to do that we have to add a property called timer timer uh, let's name this time uh, so if on time uh, is less than uh, 1 over 60th of a second which 1 over 60 is the length of the frame uh, let's make it 1 over 59 just for security reasons um, so so if the if, so if the time is less than 1 over 59 uh, there's going to be a linear velocity set to this so let's see what happens and voila it is orbiting so now let's so once we have that now let's start to define uh, more important things like g the gravitational constant in real life it's supposed to be 6.67 .6 times 10 to the power of negative 11 but clearly we cannot use that simply because it's going to take years for the simulation to happen uh, correctly for something noticeable to be visible let's define the mass of the star the mass of the source of gravity m as let's say 100 so let's go back to the wikipedia page and we know that the force equals g m1 times m2 so g so this should equal g times mass of the star times mass of the object which is own dot mass right which is own dot mass uh, 
yeah so that should be force and let's make sure we change this as well velocity is g m over r so let's transport this over here and now you can see this is working fine as you can see this is slowly approaching towards the center for some reason because it is slowing down the reason it's slowing down is because of the damping let's make sure the damping is set to zero now theoretically this will keep on going forever as long as your computer can last now let's just pull this backwards a little and let's it pee it still forms a perfect circle how amazing what if we change its mass to let's say 580 still it, it's forming a perfect circle why because we have defined the force as a product of uh, as a product of g m and the owner's mass so uh, so if this increases the force increases as well as a result the acceleration also increases the acceleration stays constant i'm sorry uh, so no matter what the mass is the uh, it's going to form that same trajectory over and over again all right all right so one more thing that we are going you're going to notice is uh, back at line 6 d dot magnitude is repeating twice what you can do is just get rid of this and make this a cube instead just to shorten the calculations although it won't make much of a difference um, and now let's add in more objects let's make tons and tons of these and let's see what do we get out of this as you can see it is a chaos but it is obvious that all of them have their own orbital motion uh, one of the problems with this is that as an object approaches closer to the center it tends to accelerate superficially in theory that it should go to infinity but it does not simply because this is this simulates it 1 over s 1 by 60 times every second does not simulate it 1 over infinity times every second plus it's not even possible in real life unless you account for black holes and, and that's still not possible because of rel relativistic physics now let's just get back to the original uh, let's add in a star a huge star right uh, this star is a let's give it a physics property and let's make it a rigid body and let's give it the maximum mass that blender can handle which is 10,000 uh, obviously it can go much higher than this using a Python but you cannot do it over here uh, so let's just make this more spherical and hit P well yeah let's define this M as the mass of the star which is star dot mass now as you can see uh, we have to define star as well. What is star? Star is the object BGE dot logic dot get get current scene. So so in that scene we need to import the object uh let's name this object star. So now we can name it over here star star okay so now you have to find that so so m mass the star is star dot mass now things should get a bit interesting that works perfectly now if we actually go back to the wikipedia page you can see this uh, you can see professor walter Lewin. uh you can see the force is acting in both directions so what what he's trying to say is that there's just one force between these both of them and it pulls this towards uh, the star and star is pulled towards the planet the only problem is not it's, this is not a problem the only thing is um, the star is is massive in comparison to the planet uh, so 
the force over mass gives a tinier acceleration for the star. The force over mass uh, or smaller mass gives a larger acceleration for the planet. So, so rea realistically speaking, we have to apply an equal and opposite force as stated in the third law of Newton. So make sure this is positive F instead. But this time we are going to apply this to the star. Let's say P. As you can see, this something happened. Now clearly that wasn't the most stable simulation. Let's bring down G. Hopefully that would clear things out. And now as you can see, this is rotating. The problem here is with damping. So let's remove all the damping. And now this works much better. Or maybe not. I, and the problem here should be it deals with. Yep, yeah, it's the velocity. So we have to make sure that uh, that star has its own velocity set. So set linear velocity as well it should be the same but not exactly it should be v times um, a thousand no v times the mass of this object which is uh, let's just make it 500 500 divided by the mass of the what happened Alright, so something strange happened, and I'm not in a position to figure out as to what happened. Uh, but we can still continue because the simulation is showing up. Uh, so the problem here, I believe, is that the star needs its own velocity to agree to agree with the the simulator uh, to agree with with the laws of gravitation essentially it has to be the other way comma zero comma zero and plus it has to be in pro inversely proportional to the mass so let's just make sure this is 500 so v times owner dot mass divided by uh, mass of the star which is m as defined over here uh, over here uh, and they should be fine and that's working awesome but one more problem that that we are having is this one over here uh, the distance between two objects is is the distance between two objects but this is just a distance between the planet and position zero. So let's make sure we have this over here. One dot position minus star dot position. Now we do not have star defined uh, before this. Let's just move this line uh, above. Right. So now this should be much better. Now this is a uh, very much an accurate representation as to how. A binary system works. Although this is not exactly a binary system, uh, if I had a way, I could have shown you. But so that is going to be it for now. Um, in part two, I'm going to show you in specific how to make uh, something like this. Something like this. So you, in this simulation, you have multiple objects. Uh, and there's a force between multiple objects. Uh, I have posted this file on BlendSwap uh, and I will be making a tutorial soon. See you later.